Good evening, everyone. Am I audible and visible to each and every one of you? Am I audible and visible to everyone? So we are going to do this particular YouTube session in two parts. We are going to do both the parts today. The first one will be about the major agricultural movements in India, whatever is left of it, as well as abroad. And then also major pest attacks, because we saw um, a question on locust. And so let's try to make sense of it, because mostly kids are like, 2020 ka question kyu hai? And so let's try it and do it step by step. So firstly, we are going to start off with the international agricultural movements. Namibia is important for us because of the fact that we have had an MOU. And uh, why is Namibia important? Fata fat se batao. Then we will start it off. Why is Namibia important for India? What has happened? What have we got? Correct, Cheetah. So Namibia in 1904, as you can see it on your screen, what happened was uh, Germans had established a colony of Southwest Africa, present day Namibia at the end of the 19th century. And they basically made laws wherein they were trying to acquire all the land of these particular farmers. Uh, the tribe that was important over here is the Herero tribe. So it led to a lot of clashes in fact, it was the first genocide of the 20th century. Genocide ka matlab aap sabko pata hai. And a lot of people from the Herero tribes were killed. Uh, Jen Lothar von Trotha, he was the one who said that any Herero, any tribe, with or without a rifle, with or without a cattle, should be killed. And uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier, in July 2015, after a very, very long time, he issued a political guideline where he said that such a massacre did in fact happen and it was a genocide. So we can keep that in mind. We can keep in mind the name of the tribe. The second one is Mexico, 1910. Mexican revolutionaries, Pancho Villa and Emiliano Zapata. These two basically uh, led this particular farmer protest wherein again, they were trying to regain their village land and they wanted to start off with subsistence agriculture. The US, this particular, uh, you know, revolution or a movement was basically because of the milk cup price. You know, it was so less that um, they were trying to, the dairy farmers were asking for better price for their milk. And it was also related to the Great Depression at that time. The economy wasn't doing very well. And the, it was also known as the Milk War, which happened in the United States of America. France, ki agar hum baat kare, to this particular American agricultural trade policies, you know, it was like a, a lot of farmers, they drove their tractors and they went and blocked the entrance of the new Euro Disneyland. Much like the farmer protest, wherein a lot of farmers had got a lot of uh, tractors and uh, they had gone and kept it in uh, in the Sindhu border and all of that. So this happened in 1992 and they said, you know, Euro Disneyland is the symbol of an American culture that has invaded our country. And now the Americans want to do the same with our agriculture is what they said. Daniel Deswards was the one, one of the leaders who was very, very popular with respect to the French uh, agricultural uh, protest back in 1992. Now, there was a WTO meeting in 2003 in Mexico. And there, a lot of, you know, what happened was WTO, since time immemorial, has been pressurizing a lot of developing countries to open up their agricultural sector to international competition. While it is a good thing for certain countries where the agricultural, uh, agricultural sector is doing very well, but in countries where the agricultural sector is not doing very well, people don't really like this. And a lot of Indians are also involved in this because WTO ke Doha round mein minimum support price ko bola gaya tha ki isko kam karna chahiye. Now keeping that in mind, over here what happened? 
um, there was a leader of South Korean Farmer Union, uh, Lee Kyung Hae, and he basically went and killed himself um, in front of the WTO meeting, I mean, the building where the WTO meeting was happening in Mexico. And so hence the South Korean farmers, they um, sort of, you know, clashed with the riot police after the funeral ceremony of their farm union leader. Philippines ki agar hum baat kare, a lot of indigenous farmers, they staged a die-in protest. You can possibly see it on your screen, uh, wherein they were trying to say, you know, um, in Philippines and Manila, the, the government was trying to create APICO and export processing zone, wherein a lot of farmers were already displaced and their source of livelihood was taken away from them. So this is another um, protest which was very, very popular. It happened in Philippines in 2012. In Colombia, a lot of farmers came on the streets and they protested against the government's agric agricultural policies, which were driving them into bankruptcy. Basically, this was to do with the free trade agreements of the European Union and the US. So free trade agreement is an agreement wherein mostly all the goods and services that are included in that particular agreement, there are no taxes involved there. And so hence, when there are no taxes involved and I get some good from another country, um, it is not really more expensive than my domestic market product. And then the consumer more often than not tends to buy the other project product, right? So that is what the Colombian farmers had a problem with. So that is what happened there. In Japan, there was another protest. What happened was this, this happened in 2014. Uh, Yoshizawa was the leader, the one that you can see over here. Uh, what happened was he led a movement to uh, protect the cattle who were left behind in the exclusion zone uh, after the nuclear disaster following the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. So this exclusion zone wherein so many cattle, they lost their lives. And uh, it happened because of the devastated Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Okay, so that is something that we can keep in mind. The next one is Belgium 2015. All you have to know is the country and what the farmer protest happened. I mean, the reason why the farmer protest happened. So this happened in Brussels in Belgium. As you can see, they're throwing a lot of stubble on the police people. And this was basically because of the plunging food prices and the soaring costs. So, the output tha, jo, jis cheez pe wo bech rahe the, wo bahut hi kam tha. Jis jo inka input cost tha, wo bahut hi zada tha. Hence, the protest happened in Belgium. In Greece, what happened was, you know, so today minimum support price, even during the farmer protest, everybody was saying that the minimum support price should be a statutory right for us. It should be written in some act. A lot of economists have also said that minimum support price dene se sarkar ke khatche bad rahe hai, which in fact is also happening. So something similar was happening in Greece. And so what Greece did was they sort of uh, converted the subsidies into pensions. And you do understand whenever somebody is giving me a pension, I need to put some contribution from my end. So that is exactly happened with the farmers over here. And they were asked to put in a lot of contribution. And they said later on, aapko pension milegi. And they said nothing doing. We need the subsidies. However, the government, on the other hand, said that subsidies, if we give it, then our fiscal deficits, our expenditures, will increase very much. And it was almost like a debt-ridden state at that time. So you can see what the protest was all about in Greece, 2016. And the last foreign agricultural movement, this one happened in Spain. This one was with respect to the olive oil producers. So they marched to the agricultural ministry in Madrid in 2019 against the low prices of olive oil. So they say uh, the, ban the banner that they're using over here says fair prices for a living uh, olive gruel. So actually, United States of America is the world's biggest consumer of olive oil if we don't take into consideration the European Union. And the Spanish Association of Olive Oil Exporters, they give almost 37% of the olive oil that is consumed worldwide is given from their side. And so they wanted basically a tariff increase and they wanted to get better money for it, is why it happened in 2019. Where did it happen? This happened in Spain. Good evening, good evening. 
Now let's come to India. So there is the green revolution, which was already there in the sample paper. And then there is also rainbow revolution, which wasn't there in the sample paper, but we'll do both of them. And we will also deal with um, the different names associated with the different revolutions that have taken place in agriculture in India. Um, so you do understand that, you know, back in the day, we had uh, very less food produce and which is why we came up with the Essential Commodities Act in 1955, which is why we made an international agreement called PL 480 with the United States of America. Now, during that time in 1940, there was a man called Richard Bradley who called India a begging bowl. Yeah, he said, we are really heavily dependent on food grains from the United States of America. Eventually we did in fact um, sign the PL 480 agreement. So that was Richard Bradley. Now, William Gadd in 1968 in Washington, D.C. used the term green revolution for the very first time. So if the question is, ki kisne sabse pehli bar green revolution term banaya, coin kisne kiya? So that is William Gadd. Green revolution is basically a, a way in which we are trying to increase the production of our food grains so that, so that we are not a begging bowl and we end up exporting more and we do not really need to import a lot of food grains. Now, Professor Norman Borlaug, and this question has already come in your sample paper, he was the one in Mexico who developed the high yield variety seeds of wheat, which we thereafter used in our green revolution. And he also received the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize in 1970 for the same. India ki agar baat kare, to India launched the Green Revolution in 1965 under the leadership of Lal Bahadur Shastri. That's why Jai, Jai Jawan Jai Kisan, because you do understand ki us samay pe, uh, Pakistan had also attacked on us and China had also attacked 1962 ki war, 1965 ki war. And this was done with the help of M.S. Swaminathan. So M.S. Swaminathan is also known as the father of green revolution in India. Agar in India ke baare mein baat kiya, green revolution ke baare mein, to M.S. Swaminathan ki baat karenge. Who has made this term or who used this term for the first time, so William Gadd bolenge. Begging bowl, I don't think anyone will ask, but well, we should know about it, right? Norman Borlaug was the one who was the Nobel Peace Prize winner, which was basically asked in the sample paper. Now, let's look at the phases of Green Revolution. The first phase, which lasted from 65 to 66 to 1980, this was crop specific. This basically looked at wheat production, which Norman Borlaug ne banaya tha. And uh, it worked out well in the sense that our begging bowl wali image thi, usse hum hat chake. Kaun se wali states ki baat ho hai yahan pe? Punjab, Haryana and Western UP. Because of the fact that, you know, these places, the weather was conducive for wheat production. Also the fact that they had a lot of money and there was enough agricultural infrastructure that they could utilize. Also, this, these regions were free from natural hazards. Phase two, 1980 to 1991, also included rice. And when we talk about rice, um, the first thing that comes to mind is West Bengal. So West Bengal showed increased productivity because of this thing, this phase, and also Bihar. The third phase also introduced cotton, oil seeds, pulses, millets. Millets ke baare mein aapne padha, International Year of the Millets 2023, Indian year of millets 2019. And now during the 10th five-year plan, we sort of increased the scope of this revolution and now we are calling it the rainbow revolution. Now we are saying we are not just crop specific, not just wheat, rice, or only cotton, oil seeds. We are also going to look into many, many other crops. So rainbow revolution mein kya aa jata hai? So green revolution is basically food grains. White revolution is milk. So Vergis curian comes to mind. Yellow revolution is oil seeds, blue revolution is fisheries, golden revolution fruits, silver revolution eggs, round revolution potatoes, pink revolution meat, grey revolution fertilizers and so on. We will just look at the people who are also associated with these revolutions. And by the time we came to the 11th five-year plan, we said nothing doing, up sustainable agriculture ke upar kaam karte hain. 
So now the list of fathers of agricultural revolutions in our country. So green revolution ke saath India mein kisko associate karte hain? MS Swaminathan. White revolution or operation flood and 26 November also comes in mind because 26 November is also called law day or constitution day but also known as milk day and uh, the person who comes in mind with respect to milk production is Burgess Curian. Blue Revolution, which is dealing with fisheries, Dr. Arun Krishnan and Hari Lal Chaudhary. Golden Revolution, which is to do with fruits, honey, horticulture, Nirpak to touch. Silver Revolution is eggs, eggs ke saath you associate, silver revolution ke saath you associate, Indira Gandhi. Yellow Revolution, which is to do with oil seeds, ye learn karna padega, ye please learn kar lena. Okay. Oil seeds ke saath, Sam Pitroda. Pink revolution, which is basically pharmaceuticals, prawns, onions. This is Durgesh Patel. Brown revolution, leather and cocoa. This is also Harilal Chaudhary. Red revolution, meat, tomato. This is Vishal Tiwari. Evergreen revolution, overall production of the entire agriculture. So evergreen revolution ke under bhi kiska naam? MS Swaminathan. Protein revolution, which is also to do with protein-based agriculture. This is associated with Narendra Modi. So, do pradhan mantri hume yaan pe dik gai. Ek protein revolution ke saath, ek silver revolution ke saath. Ye sab learn karna padega. Yes. Now we are dealing with the major pest attacks in India. Ki bhai ye locust attack kyun aa gaya? This is really uh, troubling us because 2020 ka question kahan se aa jata hai? And let's answer these questions. If any pest attack has happened in 2022, every major pest attack becomes important. Yes or no? So whatever is in the current, the static becomes important. So here we go. Let's talk about the pest attacks that have really spoiled the Indian agriculture over the years. So the first one is fall army worm. Now, pest attack may have usually kya pata hona chahiye, which is the crop that this is attacking. Ye native, ye pest native mani kaha se originate ho ra hai. Uh, taxonomy is basically the names of these particular pests, right? So uske liye to ka linsins ke liye to humne already sample paper mein pad liya hai. But other pests, you know, who has made this particular name? So that also becomes important. Kaun se states ke upar is pe impact pad raha hai? That is also something that we can keep in mind. So keeping all of that in mind, I know this, this is a lot to learn. But at least now we've got it consolidated. All that is left is retaining this particular knowledge, which will be easy. Don't worry, you'll be able to do it. Half of the things so you already know. So fall army worm was spotted in India, in Karnataka in June 2019. And ever since then, it has invaded in more than 10 states. So infestation spread from Karnataka to all the southern states and western Maharashtra and Gujarat and now to the eastern Indian states. Now, what, which crop does it attack? It attacks the maize crop primarily. Okay. And but reports from other states also suggest that it has infested paddy, sugarcane, as well as sweet corn. James Edward Smith is the sole taxonomic author, Matlab Usne Yevala Nam Banaya hai fall army worm ka. Hai? So James Edward Smith is something that we can keep in mind. Now, maize is the third most important cereal crop in India after rice and wheat. It accounts for 9% of the total food grain production in the country. The up to 2 cm long pest, the fall army worm, it landed in Africa accidentally in 2016 from its native Americas almost 100 years ago. So, this is down to earth. Se liya hai, hai na? So, dik bhi raya humko. so, native uh, America se ye originate hua hai, fir Africa mein gaya, aur uske baad Asia and Africa mein, it is um, eating up all the crops, especially maize. Entomatologist uh, CM Kaleshwar Swami, uh, first and Sharan Basapa, first detected fall army worm in the uh, 
the fields of maize crop at the University of Agriculture and Horticulture Sciences in Karnataka. So Karnataka, you have to keep in mind. The Food and Agricultural Organization, UNFAO, has already declared this as a food security threat in the African continent. All right. James I, Edward Smith is something that we have already read about. And this is produced in both Rabi as well as Kharif season. So in the sample paper, we had seen ki I think Rabi ya Kharif ke baare mein sowing ya harvesting ka poocha tha. So uh, we can keep it in mind, iske baad se Rabi and Kharif ke type se hum log crops ki baat karenge. So in the, um, the seasons of Kharif are usually June to July or harvested in December. Sometimes it is May, April harvested in October. And, um, you know, the major states for Kharif corn farming are Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. Rabi, the sowing uh, starts from October to December. Kabhi kabar agar hum wheat ki baat kare to November, right? And it is uh, harvested from April to June. Now, the next one is the thrips disease. And this one has happened in 2022. So this is the scientific name. There is no other name to it. Isko ya fir black thrips bolte hai. Ya iska scientific name use kiya jata hai. Thrips parvis pinus. Right? So 20 farmers have died by suicide since to January 2022 in Telangana's Mahabubad district because of this particular attack. Or kis cheese ke upar attack kiya hai? Chilis ke upar attack karta hai ye. Thik hai? And bohat sare suicides hoye hai. Telangana mein, Khamam district mein bhi paan suicides hoye hai. Ye particular invasive pest kahan se aya hai? Koi koi sites pe Indonesia likha hai, kahi kahi pe Thailand likha hai. Isi liye dono lik diya. Thik hai? So Indonesia and Thailand. And now it has spread in 2022 rapidly to the states of Telangana as well as Andhra Pradesh. And it has affected hundreds of farmers. A lot of suicides have happened because of this, right? And uh, around 40 to 80 percent damage has occurred to the chili crop in the two states. Fine, according to Narendra Singh Tomar. So this particular, the thrips disease, it happens because of two pests. The current one has replaced the native chili thrips uh, through competition. Maybe it is stronger. So, it has more and more. I mean, the old one was removed and the new one is more and more. So, it is more and more. 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 In Andhra Pradesh, in Telangana. Mein. And Narendra Singh Tomar also said that the change in weather and climatic conditions uh, during the crop season might have favored the establishment of this particular species. Fine. And this species was first reported in India in 2015. But not much is known about it. It has also spread to Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, as well as Maharashtra. Chilis ki baat kare, to they are cultivated in India. They are both Kharif as well as Rabi crop season wale crops, chilies. Okay, so this is something which is in the news. It is very much in the current. Isi year ki baat ho rahi hai. On an average, chili farmers get around 50 quintals ki yield. But because of this, this particular pest attack, this one over here, only five quintals were left. You know, so kitna zada damage uh, ho hai, which is why farmer suicides have also happened. Now, the point is Telangana, you have all read about this on the LMS Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana is there in Andhra Pradesh. So Andhra Pradesh ke farmers are still okay because they are going to get some money. But Telangana has its own Raitu Bandhu scheme. They are not under the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. So, you know, there is a lot of issue over here, which is why the farmer suicides have also happened more. Now, this particular species, um, the Baron Charles de Geer, he was the one who described these two species and he added a third species and named this group of insects, Thrips. So, naam kiska humne learn karna hai? Baron Charles de Geer. Konsi states ki baat ho rahi hai? Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Konsi crop ki baat ho rahi hai? Chilis jo both Kharif and Rabi season mein grow kiya jata hai. Right? And kaha se ye aya hai? To iske baare mein kuch jagahon pe Indonesia likha hai, kuch jagahon pe Thailand likha hai. Dono authenticated sites hai. So Indonesia, Thailand, dono hum likh lenge. Now the next one is your brown plant hopper. 
Now, brown plant hopper in 2016 affected Punjab. In 2022, this year, it has affected a lot of fields in Kerala. So this is also important for us. So this particular pest, it attacks the paddy crop. Okay. And unlike other pests, it attacks attack karta hai jab uh, paddy crop bilkul ready wale stage pe ho jata hai. Hai? So um, that is when this happens. And uh, you see what happens is the female, it lays its eggs from early September and that hatch within 10 days. And jo uske baad jo hatch hota hai, jo lava hota hai, it starts eating up the crop from within, which is why um, ye jo sare carbohydrates hai iske andar, paddy crop ke andar, wo sara ka sara kha jata hai. And the resultant grain is ill-filled, lightweight and very, very chaffy. And while it may appear that farmers have harvested 20 to 21 quintals, the actual yield will only be 15 to 16 quintals. So it drastically reduces the yield. Fine. And which is why there is a higher percentage of broken rice during the milling. This is also because of the brown plant hopper. Now, entire life cycle of this particular pest is 25 to 30 days, of which the most dangerous stage lasts 15 to 20 days. When the larva comes and eats all the carbohydrates and eats all the carbohydrates and eats all the crops. Now, Switzerland-based, now Chinese-owned, Syngenta's product, Chess. So we're not talking about the sport chess. We are talking about this particular product that this company has made, which is now owned by China. It is the most effective against brown plant hopper, okay? And uh, which is being used by people in India also. Now experts say that BPH, the blunt, brown plant hopper, it grows in paddy field due to less rainfall and high humidity. The taxonomic author for blunt uh, brown plant hopper is Fena RG. So, in ka naam humne learn kar liya. 2016 mein Punjab mein hua, 2022 mein Kerala mein hua. Thik hai? And brown plant hopper, this particular thing, it mostly attacks which crop? It attacks the paddy crop. Fine. Then comes your white fly attack. So, you can see it in uh, on your screen. This white fly attack it basically lowers the yield of cotton. And in fact, ye bhi dekha gaya hai ki jo BT cotton bhi use kar rahe hai, waha pe bhi iska impact pad raha hai, which is really bad because that is a genetically modified crop. So white fly is a serious pest of cotton. It has, um, you know, affected us not only in 2015, but also in 2022. So again, another thing very, very important, right? It leads to a disease called the cotton leaf curl virus. As the name suggests, uh, leaf bilkul curl sa ho jata hai, hai? So this pest, it feeds on the sap of the leaves, releases a fluid on the leaves on which black fungus grows. And jaisi black fungus grow karne lag jata hai, to photosynthesis ke upar problem aa jati hai, jis wajay se plant ki jo strength hai, wo kam ho jati hai. Now, they are native to Caribbean islands or Central America. And kaha kaam pe attack hua hai? Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan. The cotton leaf curl virus is a viral disease which has really affected the yield of the cotton plant in all of these states. And uh, it was early summer in 2016 when Selvaraj Krishnan and his team from ICAR, National Bureau of Agriculture Insect Resources, they set out to investigate a coconut field in Tamil Nadu. And while surveying that, that is when they saw the white fly for the first time. The first invasive white fly report in, uh, was from Kerala in 1995. So 1995 May. Kerala mein ye pehli baar dekha tha. Phir Tamil Nadu mein 2016 mein dekha tha. 2015-2022 mein Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan ke upar impact kaafi zada aya hai. Right? McGavin George C. Ye humare liye important ho jata hai. He is the taxonomic author, the one who has given it this name. 
Now, like I said, the origin is very, very unknown. So whatever was written in all the authenticated websites, I've put it in front of you. So they say, you know, it was widely distributed in the West Indies also, Central and South America also. So this particular pest has been everywhere except Jammu and Kashmir. So a good thing is that a UT, in fact, has been hai, white fly attacks se. Now, the next one is, again, we are seeing 2022. So that is important for us. Pink bullworm. Now, this particular thing, okay, let's talk about it. 2020 mein, Gujarat mein bhi, and Maharashtra pe bhi iska impact pada hai, right? And uh, kis ke upar ye impact karta hai? Cotton producing uh, states ke upar hi. So cotton, uh, Gujarat mein bhi bohut zada issues hai. Crop yield bohut kam ho gai. Right, the state has been witnessing this particular pink bullworm since 2014, but it has become very severe over the past three years. Maharashtra may be impact, pada hai, Punjab, Haryana may be. The pink bullworm also attacks BT cotton. Okay, and it has left some farmers very worried in the Mansa district that you know, if genetically modified crop ki upari pest attack, ho hai, fir usko hum uga kyu rahe hai? And uh, the agricultural department has barred farmers from spraying indiscriminately on the cotton crop in 2022. They're saying we are looking after this. They have also come up with a project called Project Bandhan. We will just check that out. But as of now, you know, the government is saying that indiscriminately, aap, you know, pesticides wagera dalna band kar do. Originally reported in India, ye hamara hai, pink bullworm, right? So by W.W. Saunders, it has spread throughout the cotton-producing countries and it causes an annual crop loss. Fine. It is native to Asia. Some say, of course, India because of W.W. Saunders. And it has become very, very invasive. It is uh, really impacting the agricultural sector. Taxonomic author is Steve E. Naranjo, George D. Butler and Thomas Henberry. Fine. So we will keep these names in mind. Uh, again, cotton is a kharif crop. Major parts of the country, jahan jahan pe ye ukta hai, to wo hai Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, and parts of Andhra Pradesh as well as Karnataka. Taxonomic author ki baat ho gai hai, so we can go ahead. Now, like I said, because this is such a problem, it is a periodic issue that we are facing. So the government has come up with something called the Project Bandhan. Now, Project Bandhan kya hai? This is basically taking care of um, ek tarike se is particular pest ko or reproduce karne se rok raha hai. Kaise reproduce karne se rok raha hai? It is, okay, we will we'll go step by step. Some people are also saying, aise rakhi ki tarah hum isko bandh rahe, raksha bandhan, like to the crop. Uh, and when I say people, I basically mean the farmers, right? So as pink bullworm infestation spreads in cotton in North India, Central Institute of uh, Cotton Research, state agricultural universities, and many private players, they are taking up various many causes. Abhi worldwide bhi kuch aur ho hai, wo abhi karte hai. Yahan pe hum project bandhan kar rahe hai. So the idea is to arrange for the protection throughout the season. So kya karenge? Hum mating ko disrupt karenge. Aur mating ko disrupt kis tarike se karenge? Ki ye jo male hai, usko hum thoda sa, because of the smell that will come, because of whatever we are tying, the, the male will get a little um, confused. And so hence the mating will not happen. Hence they will not reproduce. So uh, this interferes with the rep reproductive cycle of the pink bullworm in such a way that it will significantly reduce the reproduction and hence the crop damage will be reduced. The Central Insecticide Board and Registration Committee has approved this particular thing. And uh, uh, right, as a part of this, um, a solid metric dispenser rope can be easily tagged to the cotton plants and this will confuse the male adults. And so hence the mating will not happen, which is a good thing for us, right? What is happening all over the world? So this is very hush hush way se ye cheez ho hai. So genetically modified pink bullworms hum bana rahe hai. Inko release kar diya gaya hai at a secret location in the cotton fields of Arizona. This has happened in 2022. Okay, it might have happened, right? So the bullworms have been modified by US scientists to be sterile. 
so that they can mate with the natural bullworms and then no offsprings will be produced. ठीक है सो मेटिंग ही उसके साथ करवा रहे हैं जो स्टेराइल है ताकि और ऑफस्प्रिंग इनके ना प्रोड्यूस हो ये ज्यादा रिप्रोड्यूस ना हो लेकिन आज की डेट पे एक्सपेरिमेंट चल रहा है चुप चुपीते एक्सपेरिमेंट क्यों चल रहा है क्या पता और कोई और वर्जन निकल के आ जाए जो कि इट क्रिएट है थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड सो हेन्स यू नो पीपल आर रियली क्वाइट अबाउट इट बट दे से दट दिस इज है लेकिन अगर ये पॉसिबली अगर ये सक्सेसफुल हो गया तो जो सेल करते यूएस मल्टी नेशनल जॉइंट मोसेंटो दे सेल जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड बोलवम रेजिस्टेंट कॉटन एट वेरी एग्जॉबिटेंट प्राइस इनसे फिर लोग खरीदना बंद कर देंगे क्योंकि अगर हमारे पास ऐसी चीज आ गई जहां पे स्टेराइल यू नो हमारे पास एक मॉडिफाइड जीएम बोलवम आ गया जो कि सिर्फ रेजिस्टेंट नहीं स्टेराइल है जो रिप्रोडक्शन को खत्म ही कर दे तो फिर ये मोसांटो से कोई भी इनका वेरिएंट नहीं खरीदेगा सो so, अभी एज ऑफ नाउ दिस इज जस्ट लाइक इन अश हश फेज लेट सी वॉट हैपन विद इट बट अपेरेंटली इट इज हैपनिंग वेर हैव आई रेड इट डाउन टू अर्थ मैगजीन इंडियन एक्सप्रेस बोथ ऑफ दम नाउ कम्स योर मोस्ट फेमस पेस्ट विच इज योर लोकस्ट अटैक ठीक है सो अब अगर लोकस्ट अटैक आया है सो समथिंग सिमिलर टू दैट माइट कम यू नो सेम क्वेश्चन विल नॉट कम सम you know with the same topics certain other questions can come up so let's just do it might as well do an iron clad preparation so there are 10 important species of locust if you remember sample paper mein desert locust ke bare mein pucha tha out of them only four species are found in india so you should just know don't learn the name of these species at least don't learn the scientific names the species hai jisme se char india mein pai jati hai desert locust which is very infamous migratory locust bombay locust and tree locust these are found in india okay now historically desert locust has been a major threat to man's well being in fact the desert locust has been mentioned as a curse to mankind in uh, the old testament bible and also the holy quran okay and kitna ye attack kar sakte hain so apparently on an average the small locust swarm swarm hote hain see solitary अगर एक आया तो इतना इम्पैक्ट नहीं पड़ता बहुत सारे अगर आगे दैट्स अ स्वॉम राइट दे ईट एज मच फूड इन वन डे एज अबाउट टेन एलिफेंट्स ट्वेंटी फाइव कैमल्स एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड पीपल इतने पिद्दे पिद्दे से होते हैं लेकिन पच्चीस सौ लोग जो एक दिन में खाते हैं वो इनका स्वॉम खा लेता है सो यू कैन इमेज इमेजिन द अमाउंट ऑफ डैमेज दैट यू कैन क्रिएट right so they damage by devouring the leaves flowers fruits seeds bark right growing point they may also break down trees because of their weight because they come in so many numbers okay and which is why maybe they they've been termed as a curse to mankind now there are two points that there are two uh, terms that we are going to use one is a plague cycle and one is a recession period or or a slightly um, less um, damage now plague cycle is where for more than two consecutive years inhone tabahi macha ke rakhi hai locust attack ne theek hai uske baad 1 to 8 years mein bahut hi kam jab locust activity hoti hai usko hum log uh, recession period mante hain uske baad fir se they say there will be another spell of plague now let's look at india india mein years of plague ye hue hain theek hai जिसमें से जब ये 1926 टू 31 वाला प्लेग हुआ था उस टाइम पे द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंपीरियल इंडिया दे हैड एस्टैब्लिश समथिंग कॉल्ड द लोकस्ट वार्निंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन 1939 बट द हेडक्वार्टर वाज इन कराची इन अनडिवाइडेड इंडिया आज की डेट पे ये लोकस्ट वार्निंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जोधपुर में है ठीक है एंड या सो इट इज इन जोधपुर दैट इज वॉट यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड अब सर्च की अगर बात करें तो ज्यादा कहाँ पे हुआ है क्योंकि सॉलिटरी अगर होएंगे कम कम अगर वॉल्यूम मतलब नंबर्स में होंगे तो इतना ज्यादा क्रॉप डैमेज नहीं कर पाएंगे सो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री यू नीड टू नो बिकॉज सैम्पल पेपर में पूछा था कि इससे पहले और कब ये वाला अटैक हुआ था तो नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री में नाइनटीन सिक्सटी एट में भी काफी हुआ था 
right so that is your locust warning organization which basically looks into the monitoring and the control of the locust situation in scheduled desert areas because desert wala uh, locust sabse zyada hame impact karta hai kahan pe karta hai mainly in the state of rajasthan gujarat while partly in the states of punjab and haryana fine now attack of 2020 like i said solitary phase mein they can't really do much but uh, when they are in a lot of number that is when they have a, uh, i mean we have a problem a single swarm contains about 40 to 80 million adults in one square kilometer and they can travel up to 150 kilometers in one day and they can eat as much as 2500 people in one day right and uh, so desert and semi arid regions mein tabhi to iska naam desert locust laga theek hai and uh, these areas should get just enough rain taki proper thodi si green vegetation ho jaye taki they can you know lay their eggs and you know hopper development bhi ho jaye it appears that these conditions have been there since the start of 2020 and main locust breeding areas are in the horn of africa you should definitely read about the horn of africa ki ye kya hai and you should also read about the starvation problem that is taking place in certain countries within the horn of africa wo padh lena fir yemen oman uh, southern iran pakistan baluchistan khyber pakhtunkhwa right ye pakistan se hi aaya tha hamare desh mein hai na 2020 ki agar hum baat kare so what had happened they started arriving in uh, rajasthan but however subsequently because of cyclone amphan in the bay of bengal hawa aisi badal gayi ki ye har jagah hi pahunch gaye right so madhya pradesh mein bhi pahunch gaye maharashtra mein bhi pahunch gaye theek hai and they can a female locust can lay around 60 to 80 eggs three times during its average cycle of 90 days so imagine the amount that they can reproduce so that is your locust attack fine other pest attacks which have been in news but they are not as important but chalo theek hai dimag mein rakh lena assam ke dhemaji district mein ek paddy swarming caterpillar ya fir lawn army worm bolte hain isko paddy ko impact karta hai wheat blast disease वेस्ट बेंगाल में इट वॉज आइडेंटिफाइड राइट एंड वीट ब्लास्ट डिजीज एज सच वॉज फर्स्ट आइडेंटिफाइड इन ब्राजील एंड टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन में ये हुआ था वीट क्रॉप को इम्पैक्ट करता है एंड या सो वीव ऑलरेडी डन द वीट ब्लास्ट दैट इज ऑल फ्रॉम माई साइड आई नो दर इज अ लॉट टू लर्न आई नो दर आर लॉट ऑफ टर्म्स एंड ओ माई गॉड वी आर नॉट बिकमिंग एग्रीकल्चरिस्ट बट यू सी एग्रीकल्चर इज अ वेरी ह्यूज इशू इन आर कंट्री यू कैन नॉट ओनली लुक एट दैट due to the sample papers even if you've been very very consistent with your newspaper reading you know that agriculture in fact is very important because of multifarious reasons one of them being that by 2022 we had to double the income of the farmers so every step taken for that and every uh, problem that is stopping us from you know reaching our destination all of that becomes important for us right so now comes your um, फेवरेट पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो विच यू जस्ट डोंट रिप्लाई टू ठीक है पर करो अभी चलो फादर ऑफ येलो रेवल्यूशन तुक्के मारो आई डोंट केयर से इट क्या होगा आंसर हु वॉज कंसिडर्ड एज द फादर ऑफ येलो रेवल्यूशन Kushi says government part two scheme is not uploaded yet. Kushi, ठीक है. Thank you for telling me. I will just call up the concerned party and then I will uh, coax them into doing it. ठीक है. हाँ. So बढ़िया, बढ़िया, बढ़िया. A is the answer. Sam Petroda. Uh, the pest brown plant hopper usually attacks what? गुड ठीक है पैडी प्रोजेक्ट बंधन इज रिलेटेड टू वॉट अरे मैंने तो सभी ए का रखा है कल से थोड़ा आगे पीछे कर दूंगी ठीक है दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट वेल डन वेल डन एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन हु यूज द टर्म ग्रीन रेवल्यूशन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम 
<laughs> Who used the term green revolution for the first time? A is the answer. Isne to uh, begging bowl bol diya yaar. Aur ye father of green revolution in India. Aur ye Nobel Prize Prize leke chala gaya hai. HYV seeds ke liye. Theek hai? All right. Lesson learned. A should not always be there. Hai na? B bhi dalo, C bhi dalo. Theek hai? So that is all from my side. Thank you very much. Please keep learning. I know that you are... Um, we will be able to make our make it okay and um, just keep at it just keep up the hard work i know you guys are doing it and i know you guys will make it just be consistent that's all thank you see you see you tomorrow